A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today, a fun one from the Vietnamese IMO 2022. Video sponsored by Brilliant and I invite you to try out their course on competitive math problems. Link down in the description to Brilliant. If you want to prepare for something like this, then Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. More information at the end of the video. Now, what's the quest here? Now, we have given A plus B plus C being equal to 2022, okay, <laughs> all the year numbers for those mathematical Olympiads and all the reciprocals of those ABCs added together give us one over 2022. And what we need to find is the sum of all the reciprocals but raised to the 2023 power. Yeah, that's the quest. Try it out for yourself and if you're done, keep watching the video for the solution. And now we are going to dive right in. So one cool thing I immediately noticed when I did this was that, well, if we just take the, the reciprocal of A plus B plus C, then we are automatically going to get the reciprocal of 2022 out, which is on the other hand, the reciprocals of the variables added together. So let's take the reciprocal of A plus B plus C. So one over A plus B plus C is equal to one over 2022. And 2022 is by the way not equal to zero, so we can safely invert it. Meaning overall that A plus B plus C is also not equal to zero. It's going to become important in a second. And this is equal to, well, all the reciprocals added together here. Meaning one over A plus B plus C is equal to one over A plus one over B plus one over C. Okay, this right here is now our equivalence relation that we can play around with a tiny little bit more. Now the first thing I did was try to factor what we have here in some kind of way. Bring everything to one side and it's, it's equal to zero and if we were to find out that we can factor it into linear factors then well one of the linear factors must be equal to zero and the other not for example and this is how most of those mathematical Olympiad problems go at least in the number theory section. So, so at first let's subtract one over a and let's do it step by step. So by subtracting one over a on both sides we're going to get that one over a plus b plus c minus 1 over a is equal to, well, what we are going to have left is 1 over b plus 1 over c. Okay, let's try to bring all those fractions onto the same denominator on the respective sides. Now here we need to expand by, one, uh, by, by a over a and here by a plus b plus c over a plus b plus c, giving us overall, okay, putting an a on here, a minus the sum that we have here, so minus a minus b minus c, divided by a times a plus b plus c. Now on the other side, what we have, just expanding the fractions respectively by c over c and b over b, giving us b plus c, divided by bc. Okay, this is what we have right now. You are going to notice that a minus a is also going to cancel out. And this is what we got. Now, one cool thing is, we have b plus c here and basically we also have b plus c on this side. By factoring out the negative one, we're also going to get b plus c here. So the next thing we can do is we can, for example, add all of what we have here on both sides once again, giving us something added to another something equal to zero. And the cool thing is we're going to get b plus c as a common factor on both. So let's write out what I just said. Let's bring this part to the other side by adding it, giving us um, b plus c divided by bc plus, and now we are going to get b plus c, divided by a times a plus b plus c, and all of this is equal to zero. Now, we can factor out the b plus c. That's equivalent to saying b plus c times big brackets, one over bc um, plus one over a times a plus b plus c is equal to zero. And yeah, now we can once again bring it onto the same denominator. It's basically just the same game over and over again, just expanding everything and moving on. But now we have something that is equal to zero and then we can see if we can multiply both sides by the denominator, for example, such that we are going to get rid of one part of the fraction. Under the condition that's not equal to zero, the denominator obviously. So at first let us expand the, those fractions here. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So B plus C is still going to be there. Okay, our denominator is going to be a times b times c times a plus b plus c. 
a times b times c times a plus b plus c. And on top, what do we have on top? Well, on top we have a times a plus b plus c plus b times c. Yeah, this is what we got. So a times a plus b plus c plus bc is equal to zero. Well, and now we can start arguing. Okay, if we could get rid of the denominator, that would be good, then everything is going to fall apart nicely and we can maybe start factoring. Now we just need to argue that the denominator in and of itself is not equal to zero. It's a product of basically four things or product of two things. We have the, um, we have the huge product of a times b times c times and then a plus b plus c. a plus b plus c is not equal to zero, it's 2022. So that part isn't equal to zero. What about a times b times c? Well, this product can only be zero if and only if one of the parts is equal to zero. Well, that's not the case because we know that one over all the reciprocals of those variables added together is equal to some number out of the rational numbers. Meaning, since we can divide by those numbers, they can't be equal to zero, obviously. That's an Egyptian fraction, by the way. Is it? Yeah, that's an Egyptian fraction. That is cool. But yeah, um, those can be equal to zero, meaning their product can also not be equal to zero. Okay, that's what we have done here. Meaning we can multiply both sides by it, leaving us overall just with um, b plus c times, and we still have left, okay, we have bc mm, plus, let us try to multiply something out here. So let's leave the a here and let's drag the c to the outside, okay, because then we can factor out the c once again. So meaning we're going to be left with um, a times c, so plus a times c, and then plus, okay, a times a plus b. And all of this is still equal to zero, okay? And now we can pretty far already. Now we can factor out the c here, as mentioned a second ago. So c times a plus b. And now you're going to notice that a plus b is a common factor. By factoring it out, what's still in parentheses is a plus c. Oh, this is cool. So all the permutations added together, okay? B basically, and then multiplying all the parentheses together gives us zero. Or in other words, zero is equal to, so we got all the permutations, a plus c times a plus b times b plus c. Now, this is good, okay? It's now broken down into linear factors, and now we can go through the same statement as before. This product can only be zero if and only if one of the parts is equal to zero. Meaning, we got three equations going, basically, namely that a plus c is equal to zero, we got um, a plus b is equal to zero, and we got b plus c is equal to zero. Okay, all of these are ors. And now we can plug, um, Let's go with b plus c, okay? Let's suppose that b plus c without loss of generality is equal to zero. If we plug this into here, what we are going to get is a plus b plus c, but this right here is going to be equal to zero, is equal to 2022, meaning a is equal to 2022. That's the implication that we are going to get from our assumption. Now we can go a step further here. We can uh, now raise it to the 2023 power because this is what is asked of us, 2023. And well, now we can also take the reciprocal, meaning one over a to the 2023 is equal to one over 2022 to the 2023. Now, what about the other? So um, what about the other parts? We are still looking for the sum for one over b to the 2023 power plus one over c to the 2023 power. Well, let's take a look at our equation that we supposed was true. Okay, this is one of the cases that we can consider. Now, if we have b plus c is equal to zero, we can subtract c on both sides, giving us b is equal to negative c. Now, we can raise both sides to the 2023 power. If we were to raise this to 2023 power, cool thing about odd exponents is that negative something to the odd exponent is negative times the something, okay, to the odd exponent, meaning this is also equal to negative c to the 20, 23 power. So you can get rid of the parentheses basically, okay? This is just simple algebra that you can go through in your head. And now what we can do is we can invert both sides, take the reciprocal. We know that no individual part is equal to zero, so we can invert it. Same thing up here, okay, but we argued um, about that before, meaning one over b to the 20, 23 power is equal to negative one over c to the 20, 23 power. Meaning if we were to add 
1 over c to the 2023 power on both sides gives us that 1 over um, b to the 2023 um, plus 1 over c to the 2023 is equal to 0. Just a bit of manipulation. Meaning if we were to take a look at our sum that we are still looking for, this part right here is also once again 0. This is nice, right? Meaning our sum that we are looking for s, so that's the big fat conclusion, s is equal to 1 over a to the 2023. Or in other words, we know that this is the same as 1 over 2022 to the 2023. And this is our answer, and this is the most concrete answer I can give you. And did you come up with the answer for yourself, okay, by trying it out before watching the video? I don't think you tried it out for yourself. Were you brave enough? I'm not certain about that. But if you weren't brave enough, if you are still lacking some of the skills that I employed here, then maybe the contents of today's sponsor Brilliant would be the perfect fit for you. Now what makes Brilliant so special in my opinion is their interactive learning concept. Interactive in the sense that you are going to use your two hands that you hopefully still got and you are going to play around with your mouse and the graphics on the website. All of the graphics, interactive learning content, all the graphs that you can play around with will be embedded during the exercises. You are going to pick a topic, for example competitive math problems or number theory. You are going to start off very slowly with a few fundamentals. And the courses are going to get gradually harder over time, giving you a better understanding of all the concepts that lie behind, for example, factorization of polynomials. And it doesn't end there. It's not only mathematics that they have on their website. They also have chemistry, physics, philosophy, all this crazy stuff that you find in the STEM field with almost 70 interactive courses. And I've been using Brian for years by now. Two and a half years, I think. And I'm not done with all the courses. They are adding so many new things all the time on their website, holiday events, etc. that it's hard to actually get everything done that they have. Sure, there are also things that I'm not interested in too much, but other than that, all the things that I'm interested in haven't been done yet by myself. And you can also show your progress all the time, you can get daily streaks and so on. You can experience it for yourself by trying out the link at the top of the description. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, so you can try it out, see firsthand if it's something for you. And also more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they have available on their website already. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And yeah, well, have you registered for WAC already? Link on the description is going to be my mobile game. And until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!